Welcome everyone. This is your host, Immune to BS. Well, in this video, we're going to be discussing the flat earth map, which has been a hot topic in the flat earth land as of late. And we're going to be looking at the Gleason map very closely. And I'll tell you why. I firmly believe that that is the best representation of our actual world, the Earth, and the flat plane we live in. And I'm going to explain to you why I feel that is. Now, I decided to um, compare the two um, Australias, the one from the flat Earth from the Gleason map and the one from the Google Earth map, or the globe, if you will. And the two land masses on the two maps have a very, very different look and um, orientation. What is interesting, though, is that when you compare the actual points on the on the maps, they're they're identical. For instance, right here we're looking at the Trop of, Tropic of Capricorn. And you can see the uh, geographical uh, distinctions. You have the little bays or whatever they want to call it, the um, peninsulas. And if you look up on the Gleason map, you have the exact same features. And the Tropic of Capricorn comes across the exact same point at the exact same coordinates. And so you can see down at the bottom there are the peninsulas and right above is the Tropic of Capricorn and then on the Gleason map it's the exact same way. It's just the maps on here are oriented a little bit differently because of one's a you know a ball and one's the flat plane. So we look at where the uh, Tropic of Capricorn exits out um, and you'll notice the same thing. The, the points in the Geographic features are, are identical. I mean, you can see them, for instance, there's a little peninsula there, right above the Tropic of Capricorn. There's one right below it with a little hook-like feature of the terrain. And then when you go to the Gleason map, uh, you have the same thing at the exact same point of where the Tropic of Capricorn comes out. You can see that the features are, are identical in, this, in the same location. But the, the, the land masses themselves look completely different. So then I decided to look, well, let's look at um, latitude lines. And uh, I think I went to 135 on this one here. 135 east. And as you can see, you can tell by the, the geographic um, points that when you look at the Gleason map and zoom in and you notice the 135 degrees is exactly where it goes through. So there's a distinct um, look but yet all the coordinates match up perfectly so we have a question how can that be? So what I did is I decided to look at the Gleason map a little closer, a little more detail. And this is what I found. Okay. So when looking at the Gleason um, map, you'll notice that the overall design is that it's in a clock-like format. And actually, it is a clock. But you'll notice that they it had a little tool in the center that spun around the map that gave you the lines of latitude. The um, 75 degree, the 60 degree, the 40 degree, the 35 degree, 30 degree, and so forth. And so what I did is I decided to highlight, highlight those on the map just to get a better visual because some of the uh, lines are not as dark as they are. I want to know exactly where the equator is and the 
topic of cancer and so forth. Starting from the center, uh, we can start by circling the 75 degree line and followed by the 60 degree line. Next comes the 45 degree line and then the 30 degree line. Notice these are in 15 degree increments. Then we got the 15 degree, which is the Tropic of Cancer. And then comes the equator, which is a zero degree line. And now we head south. So now we have 15 degrees south, which is the Tropic of Capricorn. And then 30 degrees south. And then 45 degrees south. And then we have the 60 degrees south. Whoa, wait a minute here. What happened to the uh, 75 degrees south? I think I just found our problem. It would appear the flat earth is not equal in the land masses between the North Pole and the equator and the equator in the South Pole. So, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that when somebody decided to create a globe out of the flat earth, they did not have two equal halves to make into a sphere. So they had to elongate and stretch and do everything else to make it work. Because there is not, there's a 15 degree uh, difference or missing of latitude. So in order to make it a perfect sphere or ball, they had to stretch things out. That's why everything looks distorted. And from what I can tell, and this this one was just congestion on my part, but from what I can tell, it looks like they started from the top, from the, from the North Pole area, and everything got stretched uh, incrementally as it went down all the way down to the quote-unquote South Pole. Now, everything about this map makes complete sense in our world. I mean, it, it is a clock. Our world is a clock. We have 24 hours a day, 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of darkness. Not all the time, but you understand what I'm saying. Uh, even the time zones make perfect sense on this map. So this is the representation of the time zones that they give us. Does this make any sense to you? Or does this make more sense? The hours on the clock are the different time zones. Everywhere you look on this map, everything we need to know about the world we live in is right in front of you. Now, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Tiger Dan's um, little map making fiasco where he went sideways after he couldn't put all the continents together on the flat earth map that he was creating. Well, you know, what's interesting is that he didn't, uh, when you're looking at that map, he didn't put down the latitude lines, the degrees, nor did he put down the equator and the uh, tropics of cancer and capricorn but if you're going to try to fit globe um, land masses onto a flat plane it's not going to work because everything's been skewed so even the coordinates that have been given are all skewed it, it will not work. This was designed to fail. He accomplished his goal. His goal was to make it look like it couldn't be done because it can't be done. Because he's using land masses and designs and everything else and coordinates from a globe, a freaking roll, you know, rotating ball. So this was the first stage 
was to have Tiger Dan come down. Because then, uh, as I'm doing some research for this little video, I find this Brian Clark that he supposedly quote unquote found the flat earth map from 1920 in the Library of Congress. Wow, shocking. And what do you know? This funky looking little map has the latitude lines all the way out to 90 degrees. When the Gleason map only goes out to a little over 60. So because they need the 90 degrees to be able to make a full circle of the globe. So all these attacks on the map and they know they have to attack the map. The map is the key. They know that there are lies. We have to expose the lies that they created a ball in out of a map that is flat because that's what it represents. The earth is flat. It's not a sphere rotating at thousands of miles an hour. It is a stationary plane and it operates like a clock. It works like a clock. It even ticks like a clock.